Hi, this is Pastor Ron Taylor here at Arise Christian Center, and I am glad that you have joined us today. Get ready for a word from the Lord, a word that can change your circumstances and your situations. Let us pray this morning. Father God, we thank you and we praise you that you are God and there is no other. We thank you, Lord God, that your very presence is here with us. For you have promised that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. So right now, we invite you in. We invoke your presence, O oh Lord God. And we believe and we expect for you to move today in our circumstances and situations. And we just give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it now. All that it shall accomplish in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What another wonderful day that the Lord has made. And we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Well, I'm going to get right into the word of the Lord this morning. And I will share some things with you at the end of the message. So if you would please stay tuned just for a few moments and allow me to share some things with you and pray for some situations concerning you, your finances, your well-being. I'm going to do that at the end of this message. Let me remind you that on next Sunday, the first Sunday, it is Communion Sunday. We receive communion on that Sunday. So be ready to receive communion with us on next Sunday, the first Sunday. Now, let's make our faith declaration and then we'll get into the word of the Lord. By the word of God, I will think right, I will talk right, I will walk right, I will live right. What is your faith declaration? It is by the word of God, I will think right, I will talk right, I will walk right, I will live right. Spirit of the living God, move, have your way. Speak to our hearts, O oh God, and strengthen us in the name of Jesus. Well, I am teaching on a topic entitled, Fighting the Good Fight of Faith. A very, very important message. I was given the mandate by God that in this year of 2023, that I would give attention and teach on faith and wisdom. And that is what I've been doing in this year of 2023. If you're not fighting the good fight of faith, you are living below God's best. Yes, that is correct. If you're not fighting the good fight of faith, you are living below God's best. And so I'm teaching on how to fight the good fight of faith. And thus far, I have shared six basic ways on how to fight the good fight of faith according to the scriptures. The first way we are to fight, you must fight to hear the word of God. Number two, you must fight with the understanding that God is fighting with you and for you. Number three, you must fight with a heart that does not condemn you. Number four, you must fight to maintain a heart of love and compassion. And number five, you must fight to keep believing in your heart and unbelief out of your heart. Number six, you must fight with the sword in your mouth. And we left off here on last week talking about how to fight with the sword in your mouth. What is the sword? We're speaking of the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It is the word of God. So when I say fighting with the sword in our mouth, I simply mean that we are to fight with the word of God in our mouth. 
it is nearly impossible, if not impossible, to fight the good fight of faith with a closed mouth or a negative mouth. You are not fighting the good fight of faith if you're just keeping your mouth closed or speaking negatively. We are to fight with the sword in our mouth. Now think about this. How does faith come? The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if we're going to hear the word of God, that means that the word of God must be spoken. It must be spoken. And according to Romans chapter 10, verse 14, the Bible says, how can they hear except there is a preacher? Someone who preaches the word of God. Someone who speaks the word of God. If you're not hearing it, then faith is not coming to you. So the word must be spoken. Spoken from our mouth. So that's what we're talking about here on this particular uh, way of fighting the good fight of faith. I shared last week with you from Matthew chapter 8 where the centurion came to Jesus. And the centurion said, my servant lies at home nearly dead. He says, Jesus says, I'll come and heal him. And the centurion said to Jesus, no, you do not have to come for I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. If only you would speak the word, my servant will be healed. If only you will speak the word, my servant will be healed. We are talking about speaking the word of God. I also share with you another uh, a verse of scripture from John chapter 6, verse 63. Jesus said to his disciples, he says, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So it is the words that are spoken that makes the difference. Not the words that we meditate upon, not the words that are in our thoughts and in our thinking, but the words that we speak makes the difference. We're picking back up on this basic way of fighting the good fight of faith. As I shared last week, we didn't get an opportunity to, to complete it. And so we're going to dive right back in it today. Remember what Proverbs 18 and 21 says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Where is it at? It is in the power of the tongue. <clears throat> excuse me, of the tongue, both death and life. So we have to have the sword where? In our mouth. I want you to turn now to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, a familiar reference of scripture that you have probably heard before. But I want to share with you and bring out a point about the power in speaking the word of God about keeping the word of the sword in your mouth. Mark 11. And this is the account where Jesus curses the fig tree. And the fig tree dies and it dries up from the root. Picking it up now in verse 22. His disciples, they heard Jesus when he cursed the fig tree. And they said to him, when they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, they said, Master, the fig tree, you know, is dried up from the roots. It's dead. And this is what Jesus said to them. <clears throat> Verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. In God. Very important. Because when you're going to speak the word of God, 
it has to be laid on this foundation that Jesus gives them in verse 22. And that is, have faith in God. Now, once he tells them to have faith in God, in verse 23, he says, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. He will have whatever he says. So in verse 22, he starts out by saying, you know, have faith in God. So when we speak the word, we're to do what? Have faith in God. That is the foundation. That is what, what you are going to say lies on and is built on having faith in God. And then he assures us something. He guarantees something here, Jesus says, that when you have faith in God, and I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, see, you have to say something. Whoever says to the mountain, not who just looks at the mountain, but whoever says to the mountain, be removed and does not doubt in his heart that the mountain will move and it will be cast into the sea. And he says, believe those things he says. That's again what it looks like to have faith in God. Believe those things that you say. Have faith in God. Believe the things that you say and it will be done. He will have whatever he says. What will he have? What will you have? When you have faith in God, when you believe those things that you say and do not doubt those things you say in your heart, you will have what? Whatever you say. Can you see the power in that there? Can you see it? Have faith in God. Speak the word of God. Speak to the mountain. Do not doubt it in your heart, but believe what you're saying, and you'll have whatever you say. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, we can have whatever we say, but the prerequisite is have faith in God. Do not doubt the things you say, but believe those things. See, that is fighting the good fight of faith. That is fighting with the sword in your mouth. I want us to look at an example of this because we found a great example of this with David versus Goliath. And go now to 1 Samuel chapter 17, another very familiar reference of Scripture but one that brings out the point very, very well, that if we're going to fight the good fight of faith, we need the sword in our mouth. First Samuel chapter 17. And in this particular reference of scripture, David is sent by his father, Jesse, to carry supplies to his brothers, as well as the army of Israel. David's brothers, they are serving in the army. And so uh, his father sends supplies to them. When David shows up with the supplies, there's this giant Goliath that is taunting the army of Israel and saying, send down to me someone who will fight. And the army of Israel, they are afraid. 
They are afraid. So David shows up on the scene. And in verse 17, you know, as, as his father, David, sent his son, you know, to take supplies, you know. And in verse 19, it says, Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Notice now, the men of the army of Israel, when they saw Goliath, they became dreadfully afraid and they fled. That tells you that they're not walking by faith, they're walking by sight. When they saw him, they became dreadfully afraid. Notice now what they said. So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. I First thing that I want you to see here is that the men of the army of Israel, what they were saying. They did not have the sword in their mouth the word of God in their mouth. They had fear in their mouth. They did not have faith in their mouth. They had fear in their mouth. And they spoke, look at this man. Surely he will defy the army of Israel. They spoke defeat. They spoke, uh, 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 you know, that they would not win this fight. They spoke fear. The sword was not in their mouth. Therefore, they were not fighting a good fight of faith. They had basically already surrendered by the words of their mouth. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Notice now how David speaks. David speaks with the sword in his mouth. David speaks according to God's promises and God's word. Who is this Philistine? He doesn't have covenant with God. Who is uncircumcised? God is on our side. These were the things what David was speaking. He was speaking what? He was speaking faith. And he goes on, uh, the people uh, came and answered him uh, in this matter saying, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. And they tell David again, what shall be done for the one who kills him. Now David's brother Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. I often say, what battle? They were running. They were fleeing from the Philistine. They were hiding out. 
They were dreadfully afraid. There was no battle. There was no fight because they had no faith. They were full of fear. But notice how fear will always come against faith. And that's the same thing that happens to you. When you speak faith, when you stand in faith, fear will always attack faith. That's why your faith has to be strong. That's why your faith needs to grow and to increase. That's why you need to keep the word of God, the sword, in your mouth. So fear now speaks against faith and says, why are you here? I know your pride begins to point the finger and put a blame on faith. When actually David is speaking according to God's promises in God's word. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Faith will always rise up to the cause. Let me say that again. Faith will always rise up for the cause. Understand the cause. Why? Faith will always rise up. Fear doesn't understand cause. Faith does. Then, verse 30, then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Now when the words, now when the words, hear this now. Now when the words, that means that David was speaking. David was not silent. David did not have his mouth closed. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul and he sent for him. When the words that he spoke, what was he speaking? Faith. What was he speaking? Not fear, faith. The sword of the spirit was coming forth from his mouth. And let me say to you, it has to come forth from yours. No matter what your Goliath may be. No matter what your challenge may be. The sword needs to come forth from your mouth. You need to speak. When King Saul heard the words that he had spoken, he sent for David. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and Fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth. And he a man of war from his youth. Now notice now, fear is contagious. The whole army of Israel is afraid. Even the king, King Saul, is afraid. It has spread it throughout the entire army of Israel. But David stood in a different place. David had faith. David trusted God. David believed God. And David spoke faith. David did not doubt. And remember what we read, what Jesus said in Mark chapter 11? If you have faith in God and you do not doubt in your heart, but you believe those things, what you say, you'll have whatever you say. So as King Saul now, he begins to say to David, you can't fight with this man. He's a champion. He's been fighting ever since his youth. And then David did not bow down to the fear. But David spoke more words of faith. David says, wait a minute, let me share something with you. Let me give you my testimony. Hallelujah. He says, I used to keep my father's sheep. And a bear came in and attacked the sheep. I struck it and killed it. A lion came in and attacked the sheep. I struck it and killed it. Now notice what he says along with that. In verse 36, your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. My God, my God. Seeing 
He has defied the armies of the living God. Look at David's words. Look at what he's speaking. Faith speaks. He says, this giant is going to be just like the lion and the bear. He says, I am on the side of the living God, and the living God is on my side. And then Saul says to him, go, and may the Lord be with you. See, when you speak words of faith, and when you do not doubt in your heart, when you have faith in God, when you speak those words of faith, then that can be contagious as well. Others around you can begin to believe. Others around you will begin to say, okay, praise God, you know, I'm in agreement with you. God is calling us to fight the good fight of faith with the sword in our mouth. Now notice now, David continues in this same trend. David had to fight just to get beyond Israel's army, his brothers, as well as the king of Israel. David was already fighting the good fight of faith just to get beyond them. Now he hasn't even got to the field to fight against Goliath yet. He had to fight with his very own just to get beyond them. And I want you to understand there are times when you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith just to get beyond those who are right there in your own camp. But you have to fight that good fight. How? By speaking the word of God. By believing the word of God. By not doubting that this too shall pass. This attack too shall be behind me. God is with me. God is for me. David spoke it. He did not say, oh, yeah, this giant is big and this giant probably is going to take us out. No, no, David spoke faith. Where was the sword? In his mouth. Now, we're going to see the scriptures going to confirm this. David continued down the same line of speaking the word of God. And Saul tried to clothe David in his armor. But then Saul, uh, David says, no, this is not going to work. I need to fight this battle with weapons that I know will work for me. So you need to have weapons that are going to work for you. We're going to talk about that a little later on uh, in this teaching. But look now what David says uh, to King Saul. He took off the clothes that Saul tried to get him to fight in. They would not work for him. Then in verse 40, he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag and a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David and the man who bore the shield went before him. So here's David drawing near to Goliath, the giant. And Goliath begins to come near him. And Goliath has a man along with him in front of him with a shield. And David is just coming with, with his shepherd's bag, five smooth stones, a sling. But notice what else David is coming with. The Philistine in verse 42 looked and saw David. And he disdained him, disrespected him. For he was only a youth, a little good looking boy. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods, little g gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. But notice now what David says to the Philistine. David is still on the same path. David is still going down the same road that he did to overcome the doubt and unbelief 
of his brothers, Israel's army, and King Saul. He's still speaking faith. He's still speaking what he desires to see happen. He's still speaking what he expects. And notice what David says to him in verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with the sword, with the spear, and with the javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give the carcasses to the camp of the Philistine, to the birds of the air, and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there's a God in Israel. My God. Even though this giant now is seen, even though he's humongous, even though he has someone else along with the shield in front of him, David speak words of faith. Remember what Jesus said. You'll have whatever you say. So if you believe it and do not doubt it. So David spoke it. I'm going to get you. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to, you're going to be delivered into my hand. He spoke it. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. You have to begin to speak it. Let the sword be in your mouth. Then all this assembly shall know the Lord does not save with the sword and the spear that is in your hand, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. My God. So David drew near. I want to say to you today, whatever your challenge may be, whatever your Goliath may be, whatever your situation may be, whatever the opposition may be, draw near it in faith. I say draw near it in faith. Hallelujah. Remember the premises. Have faith in God. Draw near it in faith. And David drew near uh, Goliath in faith. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David, what? Prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. Notice what it says next. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Verse 50. Get that. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Where was the sword? The sword was in his mouth. David's sword was in his mouth. Goliath's sword was in his hand. But David's sword was in his mouth. The word of God. The promises of God. And exactly what David said is what came to pass. He said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take your head from you. And exactly what David said is what came to pass. What are you saying by faith? What are you speaking by faith? Not by fear, but what are you speaking and having faith in God about? That's what it takes, my brothers and sisters. I don't care how big the challenge seems. Have faith in God and speak the word of God. Get the sword in your mouth and you'll have whatever you say if you do not doubt it, and if you believe it, you'll have whatever you say. One of the greatest examples in the Bible, David gives to us on how to fight this good fight of faith by fighting with the sword in your mouth. 
Now, another part of fighting the good fight of faith with the sword in your mouth, we'll call this, you know, 6B, is that you make faith confessions. You make faith declarations before and during the fight. Make faith declarations. Make faith confessions before and during the fight. Quickly, as we come down the stretch to a close today, go to Hebrews chapter 10. The book of Hebrews chapter 10. And in Hebrews chapter 10, this is what it says now in verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. It tells us here, we have a responsibility to hold fast to our confession. And he says, hold fast to that confession without wavering. Don't shift to the left, shift to the right, up and down. No, when you make that confession of faith, then hold fast to it without wavering. This is what David did. He made this confession of faith. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to whip this uncircumcised Philistine. He did it without wavering. Even though others, others were saying, you can't do this. Even though the king said, you are not able. But he made a confession of faith and then he stuck to it. He didn't waver. This is what I'm encouraging you in this morning. Make a confession of faith and then hold fast to that confession of faith. Don't look at the circumstances. Don't look at how big the challenge is. Hold on to the confession. I say hold on to the confession. Why? It tells us right here in verse 23 of Hebrews 10. For he who promised is faithful. God is faithful. I say God is faithful. He who promised is faithful. What does this tell us? This tells us that our confession needs to be based upon a promise. Let me say that again. Our confession needs to be based upon a promise. So whatever you're dealing with, sickness, Lack of finances, you know, broken heart, whatever you're dealing with. I want you to understand God has a promise for you. Make a confession based upon that promise. And then don't waver. Stand on it. Speak it. Confess it. Profess it. Because he who made the promise is faithful. God is faithful. So God is being true to his promise. And when you speak that word or you speak the promise of God, it comes to pass. It comes to pass. This example, there are several, but let me give you this one in closing. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel chapter 3, they were accused of not bowing down to the golden image that the king had built, not bowing down to an idol. And it says that anyone who doesn't bow down to this idol when the music plays, they will be thrown into the fiery furnace. So Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were accused of this and they were brought in. And they said to the king, these three Hebrew boys are not bowing down to the golden image. And the king was furious. And in a rage, he says to them, when the music plays, bow down or you'll be thrown into the fiery furnace. And the three Hebrew boys said to the king, O king, there's no need 
for the music to play. For we will not bow down to any other God. We will not worship any other God. And the king was furious. And they said, they made this confession of faith. And they made it without wavering. They said, if we are thrown into the fiery furnace, our God will deliver us from the fiery furnace. And even if he does not, we'll, we'll, we will not worship any other God. They had a confession of faith. And the kings, they turned the furnace up seven times hotter. And they turned it up. And they bound the three Hebrew boys. And they took them up and thrown, threw them over into the fiery furnace. And they were bound few, uh, and a while later, the king goes over and he checks the furnace and he turned and he asked the people, didn't we throw three of them over into the furnace and they were bound? They said, yes, king. And he said, then why do I see four? They are loose. And the fourth one looks like the son of God. Huh. My God. They had a confession of faith. And their confession of faith, they spoke it before they were thrown even into the fire. See, when you have a confession of faith, and when you hold fast to that confession of faith without wavering, God is faithful. I said God is faithful. Their confession of faith invited Jesus into the furnace. My God. And it says that they were down there walking in the midst of the fire. They were there walking in the midst of the fire. And it did not hurt them. The very fire that was meant to destroy them. That fire was the very thing that delivered them. That fire was the very thing, I believe, that burned the cords that held them bound. That fires would loose them and set them free. Burn, you know, burn the cords off of them. And they were not even hurt. And the king said, my God, my God, bless be God. The ones that these boys served. And then he passed a decree that if anyone speaks against the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego served, they will be thrown, they will be cut in pieces and their house shall be burned with fire. My God, where did it begin? It began with their faith and trust in God. And then they had a confession. They spoke the word of God. My God. And their confession invited Jesus right on in to that fiery furnace. They were delivered and set free. And the Bible says, and then they were promoted. I hope you're getting this this morning. I hope you're getting this today. Not only are you going to be delivered with your confession as you hold fast to it, you're going to be promoted. I says you're going to be promoted. Give God praise. Thank God. Hallelujah. That you can fight the good fight of faith with the sword in your mouth and then see great and awesome things happen for you. That's right. Fight the good fight of faith with the sword in your mouth and make faith confessions, declarations. That's why I enjoy making faith declaration, declarations each and every week before we get into the word because faith declarations carries a power a power that strengthens your faith, that uh, uh, encourages your faith, and brings things to pass. So we thank God that as of this very moment, you are going to begin to fight with the sword, the word of God, 
in your mouth and make faith declarations. Give God some praise. Go ahead and thank him. Hallelujah. For his word will not return to you void. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word now. We thank you for all that it shall accomplish. And we know that as we fight this good fight of faith, oh Lord God, great and awesome things we shall see come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Maybe you were listening to this word today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Right now, this very moment is your time to accept him and receive him as your personal savior. How do you do it? It's simple. The word of God says that if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that Jesus died for you and rose again. You shall be saved. Simply say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and you rose again. Come into my heart and be my personal Savior. In Jesus' name. With that prayer of faith, if you prayed that for the first time, you are saved. You are born again. Welcome to the family of God. All of heaven rejoices, and I rejoice with you as well. Welcome, my brother or sister. You are born again. Now, if you would like to know what you can do to further your uh, faith and strengthen your faith in the Lord, one, stay tuned in to these messages that I'm sharing with you about fighting the good fight of faith. And two, we have things that we can share with you as well here at the ministry. You can contact us. How can you contact us? Go to our website, arisechristiancenter.com. Our contact information is there, how to get in touch with us. We do have a new phone number now. I mentioned last week that we would be getting a new phone number because our previous provider would not give us uh, the appropriate package we needed, you know, for the ministry. And so we had to change providers. Our new phone number is 310-912-1700. Again, it is there, and all the other information, our address, mailing address, it is all there on our website. Again, we have a new number, and it is there listed on our website, as well as the other information. So you can contact us, you know, by simply going to the website and contacting us, and we will get back with you. We will respond to you, you know, in that which we can help you with. Amen? All right. Well, I ask you to remain with me just for a few moments. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. One, over your finances. Get into agreement with you over your finances. So let me pray and get into agreement with you about your finances increasing and you moving to more than enough. Not just enough, more than enough. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. That's the word of God. Let's believe it and let's get into agreement about it. Father God, I thank you and I praise you that your people, Lord God, those who believe you, those who belong to you, shall have no lack. That they shall trust you as Jehovah Jireh. You will supply their need as they, Lord God, obey your instructions. We thank you now for overflow, for overrunning, a blessing being released unto them as they walk in obedience, Lord God, to your word. As I hold up, Lord God, this offering envelope, this container that holds the seed, I pray that whatever their container is, Lord God, that you will, Lord God, fill it and that they, Lord God, will get that seed into the ground 
and experience a bountiful harvest. So we thank you now that you would give them all seed to sow and that as they sow that seed, the harvest will come forth, a bountiful harvest. I come into agreement with them now. The devourer would not be able to devour it, but it will come forth as a bountiful harvest. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So see, believe God for the harvest. Believe God for the increase. That's his promise. I also want to pray for some people who got in prayer requests, as well as pray for some of those who may not have got requests in. Doris, we're praying for you. Barbara, we're praying for you and the things that you're concerned about. We thank God also for the praise reports that we have been getting in. Lillian, praise God for the praise report, how God has healed. Ronnie, we're still praying for your recovery. Eldridge, we're praying for your recovery. Bernie, we're praying for your recovery. We are believing God that he's doing an awesome work on your behalf. Liz, we thank God for your praise report. All of you who are believing God and trusting God, we stand in agreement with you now that he's the God that restores. He's the God that heals. He's the God that builds. He's the God that supplies all of your need. We trust you today. We come into agreement. You're moving in mighty ways. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord God most high. Let's continue to walk by faith, not by sight. And let's continue to believe God that as you get this word, you'll grow in this word and grow in your faith. And until we come back together again, let's keep walking by faith, not by sight, by faith. This is Pastor Ron here at Arise Christian Center encouraging you to go higher in the things of God. God bless you.